So this is my ZVS flyback driver and all the components as is. Hello, this is Danner Tech. And today I'm going to be showing you my ZVS power supply that is able to produce a high voltage electric current. I will be showing you how this ZVS power supply works, how everything is put together, and a demonstration. Now, I know I have a previous video about my same ZVS power supply, but I feel that that video didn't cover everything about how it was made adequately. And so in this video, I'd like to go in more detail and explain it better. Now to start, I'd like to thank anyone who voted for me in the microcontroller contest for voting for me on Destructibles, because I have won another prize, and actually I won quite a few things. In fact, I even won this super cool robot arm that has servos that allow it to be controlled in six axes. This allows me to build something very cool, maybe even a production line robot. I also got this kit that allows you to build an 8x8 LED cube, which is also going to be cool, an Arduino starter kit, and a 37 pack of Arduino sensors. Now all those awesome prizes I won from Instructables, including this t-shirt, will be used in my future videos for making some really cool projects, especially with that robot arm. I can't wait to make some kind of production line robot that is able to assemble a circuit board, or something as that matter. It sounds fun to me. But now back to the ZVS power supply. Let's dive into the circuit and see how it works. Now many of you may be wondering, what the heck is a ZVS flyback driver? Now pretty much what this is, is this is a high frequency oscillator that allows you to take a DC current and drive a transformer with AC current in the most efficient manner. Now this transformer is able to take in your input voltage and it put it out at your desired output voltage. Now this can be any output voltage you want depending on the ratio of the turns of the two transformers. So if the primary coil of the transformer has 10 turns on it, and your secondary coil has 100 turns, that means because it's a ratio of 1 to 10, then your voltage is going to be multiplied by 10. Now in my case, I'm using a flyback transformer that has thousands of turns on the secondary, so that way the voltage is going to be a lot higher on the output and potentially create an electric arc. Now, for how this circuit works. Now, on first glance, it may look like it's very complex, but if you even kind of understand the basic laws of electricity, you can understand how this circuit works. So what happens is the electricity flows through this inductor and into the center tap of the coil. Now, the electricity is also flowing through these two resistors into the gates of each MOSFET. Now, what happens is because no two components are perfect, one MOSFET is going to turn on before the other. So let's say the current flows through here and turns this MOSFET on. That means that this point is going to be at ground and this point is going to be at positive. And the current is going to flow through this coil right here and create a magnetic field around it. Now what happens is when this point is grounded, it'll also shut off this other MOSFET because the electricity will flow through this diode to ground. And besides any electricity that flows through into this MOSFET will hog all the current, so no current will flow through this MOSFET, or very little will. Now what happens is once this is on, and it draws current and creates a magnetic field in this coil, the voltage on this side will actually rise and fall due to this um, capacitor and this coil being a resonant circuit. That means if you give it a little boost of power, it'll start oscillating back and forth. Now what happens is this point will be positive at first because the positive current flows here and this is negative but as soon as th this ringing happens and this point on the circuit reaches negative or hits zero then what will happen is the current from the top one will be suctioned down into this MOSFET via this fast diode right here and it will actually shut off this circuit because this is a ground potential and the positive potential at this circuit will flow to ground, therefore shutting off this transistor. Now as soon as this transistor shuts off, then the current will flow through this resistor and into this MOSFET, turning it on. Now as soon as this MOSFET turns on just a little bit, this diode right here will pull all the current from this gate to permanently shut it off. 
So this transistor is off and this transistor is on. That means the current will be flowing the other way through this coil and into this transistor, making this point um, positive and this point ground. Now that will continue that ringing or oscillations until this point becomes ground again and both transistors switch. This is basically how this whole circuit works because it is pushing current through here and then pushing current through here and then back again. Now this constant push-pull of current creates a magnetic field that's fluctuating inside this core. That fluctuating magnetic field induces a current into the secondary coil that allows it to create a high voltage potential. Now we also see some other components besides these two fast diodes, MOSFETs, and transformer and capacitor. So this choke right here, its purpose is to uh, make sure that not too much current flows into, into this transformer and into the circuit. Because if we have too much of a high current flowing through here, it'll literally blow up the MOSFETs. So what an inductive choke does is, as the current flows through here, the magnetic field inside the inductive choke slowly builds, and that causes the current, instead of having a super fast rise time, to slowly rise, which allows it to not explode, because when the current rises slowly, it allows the circuit to start switching and not blow up. Now these 10K resistors going from the gate to ground, their purpose is to make sure that these transistors or MOSFETs um, don't have parasitic capacitance on the gate because once they're charged, then they might not turn off. So this is to bleed the charge off the gate so that way these transistors or MOSFETs don't stay on permanently. This 12 volt Zener diode is to make sure that even if you have 40 volts on this power supply, that the voltage at your gate will always remain 12 volts because it will regulate the voltage tightly. Now this 470 ohm resistor right here is to regulate the current flowing through the gate so that way you don't have too much current and you don't blow up the MOSFETs again. Now this whole circuit needs about 40 volts to make a very big spark and uh, 12 volts to run. So at 12 volts it's not going to have a very big spark because you're not putting as much power through it but once you get to 40 you'll be putting a lot of power. So what I'm going to do for my power supply for this circuit is take a transformer from a street light. Now what this does is, I actually found the perfect transformer, and it takes the 110 AC and it converts it into 40 volts AC. Now this is a very big transformer and it can supply a high amount of amps because this 40 volts AC is coming out at about 10 amps, which makes it about 400 watts, so perfect for this circuit. Now, this circuit requires a lot of amps. Even at 12 volts, it requires an upwards of 5 amps to run. Now what happens is, because this is AC and the circuit needs DC, I need to rectify my uh, current. So I'll take this AC current and put it through a bridge rectifier, which pretty much makes it so that way the changing or oscillating waveform from the transformer will become a DC waveform with a little bit of ripple. Now, this can be fixed by a small capacitor inside my circuit. I will also have a small switch that will be controlling this whole entire setup. So I can turn it on and off, and I will connect my whole circuit to a Variac transformer. Now after you kind of understand how this ZVS flyback driver works, let's take a look at what my ZVS flyback driver looks like. So here it is. So this is my ZVS flyback driver, and all the components as is. Now, let me label a few of them for you. So this part right here is the switch and this is what controls the AC input to the actual transformer. This is the street light transformer that takes 110 volts AC and converts it to 40 volts DC. That is then fed into this bridge rectifier, which then goes into these two filter capacitors, and through this inductive choke into the actual circuit right here. Now this circuit drives through these three wires, this coil on the flyback transformer. Now, if we take a closer look at this uh, control board, that my ZVS flyback driver is running on, you can see that I have actually made this in my house. So this circuit board is homemade, which means I actually drew out all these traces on it and then used ferric chloride etching solution to remove all the copper around the traces that I have drawn. Now all these components are soldered in place and all the copper traces have an extra layer of solder on top of them because the currents in this circuit are so high that if I just left the thin layer of copper on the bottom, it will literally explode. And I have had that issue. If we look over here, one of the resistors that I had that are on the other side of this capacitor have actually exploded due to the high currents and not enough solder. 
So if we lift up this resistor right here, you can see a little bit of a blast mark underneath from where the solder trace is exploded. <laughs> and this was kind of funny, but ever since I have put thicker layers of solder on here and it's worked fine. Now, what happens is this resistor and Zener diode are on each separate IRFP250 MOSFET transistor. These resistors right here and right here are the 470 ohm resistors that control the gate voltage. Now this whole circuit can be made pretty easily. I don't actually have a layout for how I placed my circuit traces on here, but pretty much what I just did is I took it and I placed the different components on here and I just drew with a sharpie how I thought they would work best and they did. This is kind of a skill that you have to practice a lot in order to get it, but once you're done you can just draw out any board like this and have it work. This entire subassembly of my ZVS flyback driver is mounted on a heatsink. Now these uh, transistors or MOSFETs do not get that hot because they switch at zero voltage, just like my explanation showed you. That means if their on or off state switches when it has zero voltage across it, then it won't actually uh, produce a very high heat output in terms of heat. Now because if this uh, MOSFET has let's say 40 volts across it when it switches, that 40 volts for a fraction of a second has to go somewhere and that leaves the MOSFET as heat. But when it switches at zero volts, then it doesn't hardly produce any heat. But I still have it mounted to a heatsink just in case. And they do get a little bit hot during running, especially the bridge rectifier. Now for the flyback transformer. So it is connected to the actual ZVS driver board by using this little uh, lug terminal thing. Now there's four wires coming out of here, but two of the wires are just going into the same port. So it's technically three wires. And these are going to a center tapped coil on here that is about five winds on each side. Now you may have noticed that I zip tied a heatsink to this transformer. And you may be thinking, this is outrageous. Why would he put a heatsink on a transformer? Well, this is because the coil windings here actually get very hot, and so does the ferrite core. And so, believe it or not, this actually helps cool down the windings and helps this transformer work better. Now, down here, you can see that all the normal pins of the flyback are gone and covered with this orange stuff. This orange stuff is wax to protect the pins on the flyback driver from overvoltage and arcing, because there's super high voltages in between these pins, and if there's no wax here, the voltage would arc between them. This wax stops that. This wire right here is the ground wire of the flyback transformer, and it has been soldered and heat shrinked onto here to prevent arc over. The final part of my circuit, or the capacitor bank, has been formed using three of these capacitors that I found in many different electronic appliances. And all these capacitors, when they add up in their parallel and series format, uh, form a 0.68 microfarad capacitor. Now you need to remember to use very high gauge wires for this capacitor bank, because surprisingly, it draws a lot of current. Because the frequency it is resonating at is, is passing current through these capacitors, they will get very hot during use, and if you use two small gauge wires like I did, they will literally vaporize. Now this whole entire circuit is mounted on a piece of uh, wood. Now this is actually two pieces of wood that are screwed together and held together by these two other pieces of wood on the bottom. They're kind of like Lincoln Logs. It forms a very good base. Now that you see this circuit and you know how it works and how it's built, let's get to the part everybody's waiting for, the demonstration. Now to power up this circuit, I will first make sure that the switch is in the off position. And then I will take the plug that goes to the ZVS flyback driver, stuck on my tripod right now, and I will plug it in to the Variac transformer. Now I'm going to start this off at a lower voltage, let's say uh, 50 volts, so that way we don't have a high voltage on the transformer, and so the circuit won't start oscillating yet. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this cup that comes out of the anode of the flyback transformer, because flyback transformers have an internal diode that rectifies the output current from AC to DC. And we're going to take a wire going from the cathode, and we're going to connect it just to an alligator clip. Now we're going to also have to insulate this with a screwdriver, because this circuit uses lethally high voltages. This puts out about uh, 35, maybe 50,000 volts at a very high current. This means that if you touch these wires while the circuit is operational, 
then the current could flow through your heart and you could die. And that is not good. So this is my safety warning to anyone who's building this circuit. Now, I fully encourage anyone who wants to to build one of these ZVS flyback drivers. They're really fun to play with, and they're really cool to build. But I'm just not liable if any one of you uh, hurts yourself or gets killed because yeah, you're using high voltage. Because high voltage is extremely dangerous. So just be careful if you're building it. I'm not liable. Now, what you're going to do with the cathode is you're going to connect that to a heat sink. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because the electrons are leaving the cathode so fast that if you don't have a heat sink on here, it'll overheat and actually melt the wire that the cathode is made of. And I'll show you a demonstration of that. Now, what we're going to do is after connecting the anode to a screwdriver, we can fire up this circuit and see what it does. So I'll initially turn on this circuit. And as you can see, even at a low voltage, you can still see a little arc. Now that's a small arc because that's only running at about 50% power. But as I turn up the power while the arc is running, We can see how big the arc can actually get. Now another fun experiment to try with this circuit is to take a little piece of copper wire and have it come off the heatsink. Now before you touch any electrical part of the circuit, you always need to make sure to touch both ends of the transformer together to discharge them so any parasitic capacitance the holding, that's holding any charge will be drained. Now what happens is if I fire up the circuit again and then touch the wire to this other piece of wire, you'll see it start to vaporize. Oh crap. Okay, if you have carpet nearby your circuit, you're going to want to have to place a piece of paper, in my case the schematic diagram for the actual circuit, just in case any sparks decide to dance off and mess around because these burn holes in your carpet. So as you can see this circuit is pretty fun. Now we can even see how this circuit actually works by looking at the base voltages for each MOSFET transistor inside the ZVS driver. So here I have one probe of my oscilloscope to one gate of one MOSFET, and the other probe to the other gate of the other MOSFET. Now let's see what it looks like when I turn it on on the oscilloscope. So now we can see the waveforms on the circuit, and this is exactly what the circuit is supposed to be doing. So right here is the off time of the gate, and here is the on time. And as you can see, the off time of one gate corresponds perfectly to the on time of the other gate. This means that if one gate turns on, then the other gate has to turn off, so no two MOSFETs are on at the same time. So this method of the gates going like this in their waveforms is showing that only one gate stays on at a certain amount of time. Now as always, thanks for watching Tenor Tech. I hope you learned something from this video and enjoyed the cool arcs that it can produce. Now, if you want to see more examples of this uh, ZVS driver in action, I have tons of videos of me showing you how to use this same driver to make Tesla coils, to make uh, projects that are, frankly, just for the purpose of destroying other things, and other cool projects. I'll post some links in the description. So overall, this circuit is a success. It's actually been running for me for about a year and a half now, and it's been working just fine. So this is a very resilient circuit, very energy efficient, and it's really cool to produce some high voltage. So it's pretty cool. So I hope you liked this video, hope you learned something about how a ZVS driver works. And my next video I'm going to be doing something. I don't know what I'm going to be doing in my next video. I've got lots of ideas, lots of things floating around. I could be fixing a microwave, I could be fixing another microwave inverter. Could be building something new. I don't know. Whatever it is, it will be cool. Thanks for watching. Oh, yes. Oh, dang it, started a fire. Looks like another hole to add to the collection of random burnt holes in my desk.